Remnant, can you come over here and grab this? Pause. That's it. So well done. You take those nice snacks. I'll take your snake. Give him a clap for giving it back to me, guys. Well done. Now, we have some fantastic areas and everything I need to do. So, Brendan, do you know where you're going where you came from? Yes, you do. Give him a round of applause, guys. You've done a fantastic idea. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to move back to the parrot family and introduce you guys to some more of our parrots. Now, over in the corner, we have got what we call a hybrid macaw joining us. Now, Sally, of course, with the blue and gold or blue and yellow macaw, and macaw you particularly see flying around in the wilds today. However, Olive, who's a hybrid macaw, isn't a bird you typically see flying around in the wild. Hybrid macaws occur generally in captivity, when people keep two different species together, and they generally, if they pair up, and they like each other's company, they produce offspring that are rather unusual to look at. Now I'm going to bring Olive out here so you can get a bit of a closer look at her. Obviously I'm restricted as to how far and how close I can get to you guys. Now she is one of the few hybrids we have here at the show, but she's the only hybrid that looks like this. She is quite the stunner here at the show. Now macaws, like I said, very intelligent. They've got very large beak. Macaws are known for that large beak that they have. It's a very useful tool for the birds. They use it to pack up on large nuts and seeds. They can also use it to help them climb about. Now these birds tend to forage and spend most of their time high up in the canopy. So up in the canopy, the branches may not be as not as stable. So their beak, as well as their feet, they help them climb about. Now parrots have very unique feet. They have what we call zygodactyl feet. So unlike most birds that have three toes at the front and one toe at the back, parrots have two toes at the front and two toes at the back, which makes them exceptional climbers in the trees, and it also means they can use their feet very much like we use our hands. So they can hold a fruit or a nut in that foot and make it easier to eat. Now Olive also likes to show off her wings, because she's quite a stunning lady, again, beautiful. <laughs> Because she's in, looks pretty much a rainbow of colours as Olive, and we'll share one of your lovely wings on this side as well. Now, another thing that's unique with macaws as well is what we call their laws. You going to show the wings? And again, beautiful. Now, a law of one macaw is basically the patch of skin that's around her eye. So you'll notice that she's almost like missing feathers around her eye in the beak area. But she has got tiny feathers on that area, and that is, we refer that to as the parrot's laws. It basically acts like a fingerprint just to a human. That's because the tiny feathers that are on that bare patch of skin are patterned uniquely to each macaw. So no two macaws have the same little facial feathers on that lost area. So if you have a large collection of birds, all the same species, you could use the feathers on the face in form of identification, unless that bird has a leg ring or something like that on it. Now, macaws are the only species of parrot that have that little patch of skin on the face. No other type of parrot has this. Now, a common question we do get asked as well about our parrots is if any of them talk. And uh, Olive's not the best example, but she does say hello. Say hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> One more time, hello. <laughs> there we go. Give her a clap for saying hello. That's all she can say so far. So she makes up for that with this activity on the table here. Now, we call this a form board. Think of it like a jigsaw puzzle no. or a puzzle board. I'll show you guys is how we train Olive to do this activity. We always basically start any training off very in very, very basic form. So basically all we do is placing each of these shapes right in front of the ball. We pop her on the table, we point to a shape, and we point to the whole ball. Each time she got it in the correct place, she was rewarded with either food, vocal praise, or you guys giving her on the ball. So after practicing that a few times with her every single day, nice short sessions. We then got to the point where I don't need to actually use the shapes here. I can take them all the way across to the other side of the table. I can give them a mix up on the table as well. So this time when I pop Olive on the table, she's got to decide all by herself where each of the shapes go. So to prove you guys still need my help, I'm going to start right over here. So as you can see, I'm not giving it any cheeky hints or tips. I'm not telling her this shape goes there, this shape goes there. She's using, she's learned to use her colour vision as well as her fantastic memory to, in, to remember where each shape goes on the board. And she does like to check they're all in place. And there goes the final one. Well done, Olive. That was brilliant. Now these birds can see in colour, like we can.
hand, but they can also see in a much larger colour range as well. They can see in ultraviolet light from these birds. Now, these birds would use that colour vision when foraging for fruit. Certain fruits and berries can be poisonous to them. Their colour vision helps them identify the safe fruits from the fruits which are best to avoid. And obviously their great memory that they have as well helps them when they're foraging in the wild. They can remember what time of year each tree fruits and when it fruits as well. Where are you going? He's taking a different route today. Now this is another little macaw we have here at the show. Uh, this one's not Sally, it's a completely different uh, macaw that we have here. And uh, he's the true chatterbox here me. at the bird show. So he's basically the best talker that we have. Hello there. So I'm not going to tell you guys his name because he much prefers to introduce himself to you guys. But he's going to start off by giving you a greeting. So just like Olive did, he's going to start off by giving you a nice big hello. And can you tell everyone what's your name? There's <laughs> some wildlife is flying around. There must be a predator in the area. <laughs> and then all, and that's the bird is captive bread, and any other bird that flies around circling in the area, it generally means the predator about. So obviously you need to look out where this predator is. All these parrots backstage are picking up as well, because they're like, oh my god, what's flying around? Oh, look at that bird. And it can simply just be a balloon flying in the air. Because obviously it's a very random object. They don't like planes either, because again, a plane looks like a very large predatory bird. But we'll see if he's got, it looks more relaxed now. He seems like the uh, moment's gone and passed. So we'll start off again. Can we start from below? Uh -huh. There we go. Now can you tell him what's your name? Uh -huh. Charlie, yeah, that's right. What's your nickname? Uh -huh. Pretty boy. Oh, look at this. Thank you. That's a great one for me. Now Charlie is the only parent that can tell you guys what he likes to eat. So Charlie, tell everyone in the audience what is your favourite thing to eat. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, what's your favourite thing to eat? Chocolate. Chocolate. Um, Charlie's lying. He has never tasted chocolate before in his life. He certainly doesn't get any chocolate either, even if he asks for it. Because chocolate is very, very bad for parrots. Just like it's very bad for your own pet dogs at home. It can prove fatal to both species. Now, the real thing that Charlie does like to eat are the treats I keep in my pocket. It's a favourite treat of all of our parrots. But he's the only one that can tell you what they are. I'm going to give you a clue, however, because Charlie thinks the quicker he says this word, the quicker he gets the treat. So I have a nut in my pocket. Charlie's going to tell you what type of nut, okay? So what is that? <laughs> You're going to say it slower, no one's going to understand you at all. What? <laughs> I heard someone saying it, anyone that has any guess? Shout out. Yeah, he's saying peanut. Peanut, peanut, okay, you can have the peanut, we'll leave it at that. Now, Charlie can also string a sentence together as well. It's a bit of a random one. But Charlie, can you say to the audience, Job is skip. Job is skip. One more time, Job is skip. There you go, give me a clap for that guy, that was brilliant. Now, Charlie is also great at impressions. So we'll start off with an easy one. Charlie, are you ready? Let's see your first impression of a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Big dog. Another one. Well done. And uh, we'll pick a different animal now. We'll think of one we'd find on the farm. Are you ready, Charlie? Let's hear a chicken. He's not very scary. He sounds more like a policy. But we'll give it a go. Shall I can you try and scare this audience with your impression of a big, scary monster? <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, stick your tongue out, say blah, 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 blah
that. And as well as sticking his tongue out, he can be even ruder and blow a raspberry. <laughs> 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 now they found that really funny, do you find it funny? Do you make laugh? I find it's hilarious today. <laughs> now Charlie is also a big fan of the ladies, but he does have a rather inappropriate way of getting their attention when he spots one. So I'm going to apologise in advance, but Charlie, what do you do when you spot a pretty girl? You turn around and you give her a nice, big, <laughs> now, unfortunately, that has brought us to the end of Charlie's part. But before he leaves us and before he says goodbye to you guys, I want you guys to say goodbye to him. So, everyone, stick your hand in the air and wave it around and say goodbye, Charlie! Every girl, they say goodbye to you. What would you like to say to them? <laughs> there we go. Give a round of applause, guys. Yes, goodbye. Now, usually, Charlie would bring the show to an end. However, we've got one more bird. And we saved him until last because he is the true raptor here at the bird show. So basically, he's a bird of prey that feeds on other birds, as well as mammals. So we have to ensure that all our birds are safely away before we bring him out. Now we have two of these birds, two of the same species. They are Harris Hawks and what we have here. We have two male Harris Hawks, they're both brothers. And we're just going to introduce you guys to one of the two. Now just a heads up, he's going to be flying here, there and everywhere. And he's flying up there, he's flying on the wall, so you'll see him pinging around everywhere. And sometimes he likes to disappear over that wall. But don't worry, he generally almost returns. So, let's bring Aztec out to meet you guys. There he is. This is Aztec, our Harris <laughs> Hawk. Now these birds, like I said, catch other birds off the wing, like so. Really <laughs> there is. They can snatch small birds with their feet, and they generally obviously take them to the highest point. So you'll notice Aztec is always staying nice and high because these birds have only one natural predator, and that is whoa, just that. <laughs> He's gone over the wall. He's gone over the wall. Now, these birds, as you can say, fly very, very fast indeed. The wall is very jaggy and very uneven, so obviously Aztec doesn't feel safe enough to land on that. So over on the other side of the wall is the building, which is what he's preferred to land on. Now, at Harris Hawks are referred to as the Labrador of the sky. That's because they're very easy to train, highly intelligent, and generally obedient. Now, hopefully Aztec, there he is, will reappear back into the arena. Ready? Yes, in the back of that guy, in the fantastic cat <laughs> Now, these birds are very unusual for birds of prey at Harris Hawks. Most birds of prey are solitary hunters. They yeah, yes. hunt and live alone. Harris Hawks hunt in a group. Now, this group is known as a cask. Now, the cask is led by a dominant female. The female Harris Hawk is twice the size of the male, like Aztec here. She is the one that makes the kill, and she is also the one that leads the hunt. The male is there. Are you finished that bit or not? <laughs> I'm going to put this in the air because it's going to land on my head if you're not going to work for it. <laughs> Ready? No? He's thinking about it. Now, like I said, lots of people ask us how do we make the birds do everything we want to do. I think I've taken out enough of catching, so it looks like he's going to want to come down to see you guys a bit closer. So we're going to get another member of staff to come out and stay, and uh, they're going to appear, and here comes our oh, He comes straight down. down. So we can get him a little bit close to you guys because obviously he'll be flying here and everywhere with your head. Now as I was saying, these birds live in a group. That group is led by the female. She's the one that makes the final kill. The male birds will actually run along the ground and flush out any potential prey for the female to kill. Once they do kill and catch their prey, they display this behaviour. So this archer with the wings is known as mantling. It's basically him guarding the food, hiding it from the other members of the group. So it means that the bird who makes the first kill gets the best pickings of that male, meal, and if he is feeling generous, he will leave the leftovers for the rest of the group, because obviously they're leaving that social group. Now he's done some fantastic catches out here, so if you guys give him a round of applause as he heads off stage for the end of there. Some very quick fast flying from you. Now that has actually 
actually brought us to an end, and we are not finished there. We're going to bring out some more parrots for you guys to meet at the end of our show. Now we're going to be joined by two more parrots, but again, they will only enter our arena once Harris Hawk is safely away.